Welcome to the True Crime Never Sleeps Podcast. I'm your host, Larry Lace. And on today's episode, we bring you the se- uh, season finale of Decoding Cults with our look at Om Shinriku, the Japanese religious cult that was responsible for the deadly 1995 sarin gas attack in Tokyo. We're going to touch on the cult mentality, brainwashing, and psychological impact on its members. It is a controversial and sensitive topic, but it's important to understand the history and the impact of Aum Shin Rikyo, or apologies if I'm butchering the name wrong, to prevent similar events from happening in the future. But before we dive right into it, we'd like to thank our sponsor, Audible, for sponsoring this episode. If you're interested in getting a free audiobook of your choice in a free three-month trial, Head on over to audibletrial.com slash Larry21. And now without further ado, we're diving right in. The leader of the cult and founder was Shoko Asara. He was born in 1955 as Chizo Montesamoto. He was blind from birth and grew up in a poor household in Yatsushiro, Japan. He struggled academically in school and dropped out of high school. He later attended a school for the blind where he learned to read and write braille. After that, he trained as a yoga instructor and acupuncturist. He began to develop an interest in spiritual matters, particularly in Buddhism and Hinduism. He also became interested in the idea of attaining spiritual powers through yoga and meditation. He read extensively on various religious and spiritual subjects and began to form his own unique belief system. He believed that the end of the world was approaching and that he was the only one who could save humanity. In 1984, he established Aum Shinrikyo as a legitimate religious organization. Initially, he attracted a small number of followers, mostly from the yoga and meditation communities. However, as the cult grew, he began to attract a wider range of followers, including students, professionals, and even politicians. The cult's recruitment efforts were focused on highly educated and successful individuals who were attracted by his charismatic, charismatic excuse me, personality and the promise of spiritual enlightenment. They were also drawn by the opportunity to be part of an elite group that would survive the apocalypse and help to create a new world order. On March 20th, 1995, members of Aum Shun Rikyo released sarin gas on five Tokyo subway trains during the morning rush hour. The attack killed 13 people and injured more than 5,000. The gas spread quickly through the subway cars, causing chaos and panic among the passengers. Many of the victims suffered from respiratory failure and vision problems, and some were permanently disabled. The attack was devastating and had a profound impact on the city and its residents. The Japanese government launched an extensive investigation into the attack, and it quickly became clear that Aum um, Shinrikyo was responsible. The cult had been planning and preparing for the attack for months, and several of its senior members were directly involved in the planning and execution of the attack. The leader and several other cult leaders were arrested and the cult's facilities were searched and closed down. Um, Shinrikyo believed that the end of the world was imminent and that the Japanese government was controlled by evil forces that needed to be eliminated. The cult believed that the sarin gas attack would trigger a global apocalypse, which would ultimately lead to the salvation of humanity. He and other cult leaders justified the attack by claiming that it was necessary to eliminate the evil forces and bring about the end of the world. The Japanese government reacted quickly and firmly, launching a nationwide crackdown on Aum Shinrikyo and its members. The cult's facilities were searched and its leaders were arrested and charged with various crimes related to the sarin gas attack and other criminal activities. The public was outraged by the attack and shocked by the involvement of the cult. Many people were frightened and angry, and there was a widespread feeling that something needed to be done to prevent similar incidents from happening in the future. The government swiftly banned the cult and froze its assets. Many of its leaders, including Asahara, was arrested and charged with various crimes including murder, attempted murder, and illegal production of chemical weapons. 
The trials took several years, and Asahara was sentenced to death in 2004, and several other members received long prison sentences. Today, Aumashin Rikyo no longer exists as a legal entity. However, some of its members still follow the teachings and continue to call themselves Aumashin Rikyo. The cult is considered to be a criminal organization, and it is under constant surveillance by the Japanese government. The sarin gas attack remains a dark chapter in Japan's history, and it serves as a reminder of the dangers of religious extremism and the importance of preventing similar incidents from happening in the future. If you want to learn more about this cult, uh, we have a link in the description to several resources. Give us your thoughts and opinions on this cult in the comment section below, and always remember to educate yourself about potential cults to protect yourself from the dangers that they can create. It's important to be vigilant and critical when it comes to religious groups or any kind of organizations that promise salvation or a better future, as they can be dangerous and harmful, and they often exploit vulnerable individuals. This episode, we covered the history and impact of Ahum Shinrikyo, and it's important to remember the victims and lessons that we can learn from the tragic sarin gas attack. So as always, give us a thumbs up if you like our video, subscribe to the channel for even more content, and hit that bell notification button to be notified of future videos. And if you want to support the show, you can buy us a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash tcns. As always, thank you for watching and listening, and we will see you back here in two weeks for our start of our next season entitled Breakout Kings, where we dive into some of the most infamous prison breaks of all time. Thank you so much for watching and listening. Join us next time.